Saturday Night Live, or Sunil for short, is the American live comedy show that's been running for almost half a century. Like with The Simpsons, people always say that it stopped being funny years ago, and bicker over what year it was that it stopped being funny, but whether anyone still finds Saturday Night Live funny or not is irrelevant, because they can't really cancel it at this point because it's been running for so long that it's become like the news or the weather. It's pretty much always been there, and cancelling it now would just confuse everybody. Wait, you're cancelling the weather? W why? Well, everyone's seen it already. You always do the same show every day. It is sunny. It is rainy. It is thunderstorm. Can't you think of any different weathers? Like, I've never seen you do acid rain before, or there's boiling lava falling out of the clouds. Come on, the weather's been really unoriginal for years. We need fresh ideas. Personally, I like the odd sketch occasionally, but like most people, I only ever really pay attention to Saturday Night Live whenever anything important's happening, specifically a presidential election, at which point people who don't understand what the word objective means will shout even louder about how unfunny it is now. Oh my god, I just watched a piece of satire that was political. Media should never be political. Pieces of comedy content should always be balanced and objective. This is an outrage. Why doesn't the government regulate this sort of thing? Wait, do I like regulation or do I hate it? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand my own opinions. Oh god, my head hurts. But there was a reason to pay attention to Sunil recently, and that reason was there was an episode hosted by famous smart man and messiah who drives cars in space, Elon Musk. Now, as we all know, Elon Musk is famous for being the CEO of a car manufacturer, discovering the cure for coronavirus, solving world hunger, inventing oxygen, and just generally being the smartest, bestest, and guiding beacon of hope for all humanity in the world ever. Quite why someone with the largest recorded brain in human history would want to fritter away their precious hours on this earth by hosting a comedy show is beyond me. But nevertheless, His Highness, Emperor, King Godbrain himself deigned to grace us with his glorious presence. And this isn't the first time that he's appeared on an American comedy staple. He did Rick and Morty the other year, and he also did The Simpsons, in an episode where the plot is that Space Jesus himself arrives in Springfield, and everyone bows down to hail his glorious geniusness. And then Elon proceeds to get smarter and smarter over the course of the episode until his brain bursts out of his head, grows to the size of a building and starts absorbing all life on this pathetic little planet. The main thing I was wondering going into this was whether someone whose brain is so impressive and huge would even be able to fit on the Saturday Night Live stage. But the set designers appear to have knocked through the walls of the studio and expanded the stage by the 80 trillion square miles needed in order to accommodate Elon Musk's massive, massive brain. Anyway, so Saturday Night Live is usually either hosted by comedians, musicians, actors, children wearing their daddy's clothes, or random celebrities that people have heard of. And given those latter two aren't exactly known for comedy, you know that when they're hosting it, the point of the show is not so much to be entertaining, but to either service the aforementioned celebrity's public image in some way, or to boost SNL's ratings. Some spoke out against Elon Musk hosting it, and their reasoning was that Musk is an incredibly rich and powerful businessman, and this may be a case of the show being cynically used to massage Musk's public image in some way, in the same way that it did for Donald Trump when he hosted it in 2015. But honestly, you don't need to worry that much about Elon Musk using the show to massage his public image, because everybody already loves him, and he doesn't exactly need to do damage control because he has the most completely spotless track record of any human being on planet Earth, and Wait, what's that on the screen? Okay, no. When he said that, what he was actually doing was engaging in an incredibly complex form of double reverse super irony that you and your puny mortal brains just didn't understand. They didn't just have him host it though, they also had him feature in some incredibly clever sketches. Like this one, where he plays Wario from the Super Mario games. And Wario is put on trial, like what happens in the real world. This sketch has been unfairly slandered, and I really don't think people have properly understood it. Because really, there is a lot of complicated mathematics that goes into channeling the spirit of YouTube sketch comedy from 2007. What if video games were real life is an incredibly complex and profound question explored by some of the greatest philosophers of our time, like Smosh, Doug Walker, Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato. And this sketch does do a lot to add to this intriguing discussion, although I do question the use of Wario. Because I personally think that Super Mario but done in real life is a bit of an obvious scenario. Personally I would have had Elon Musk do Subnautica and have him get eaten by a massive fish. 
He also appeared in a skit in which a couple of hosts asked him to explain what the digital currency Dogecoin is. And he didn't do a very good job, and some of you may still not understand what it is, so let me explain. So, Dogecoin is like regular money, but inside of a computer. And it was valuing quite high before this episode, because everyone was expecting Musk to mention it a few times, but when there were some jokes at its expense, that made the currency sad and the value went down. In a nutshell, cryptocurrencies are basically thirsty fuckers who depend on a constant stream of positive attention in order to function. Huh, no wonder Elon Musk has shown such an interest in cryptocurrencies. But anyway, overall, he did well, didn't he? He showed up, he delivered his lines, he told some jokes, he got some laughs like a proper entertainer. And for that, we should all congratulate him. Be proud of Elon Musk. It's like he's your child, and not an incredibly rich and powerful businessman. Honestly, it was a tough thing for him to do, you know? Live TV, he was out of his comfort zone, but ultimately he showed up and did the thing that he'd agreed to do. And it's very impressive that someone with that much money managed to do something on a television show. I mean, sure, yes, if we were applying the standards that we apply to literally anything else, then yes, it was an incredibly dry hour of television with, like, one good sketch in it. But honestly, well done, incredibly powerful businessman. You deserve my patronising pat on the head. Anyway, in conclusion... Aww, aren't incredibly rich and powerful multi-billionaires adorable? I can't tell what's more unfunnier, SNL or this video. <gasps> oh my god, Elon! This super powerful future predicting machine that you invented was right! I never would have guessed that 82 people would post the exact same comment on this video over and over again, under the impression that they were making the most original observation in the fucking world.